I truly believe that pak choy is the most underestimated crop in Trinidad. It is so nutritious. It is absolutely delicious. You can see how delicious it is. Things were eating this pak choy before I got a chance to pick it, but that's my fault. It is good for your heart, good for blood pressure, can help things in your brain. Just an all around amazing, amazing crop that originated in the Southeast of Asia. So let's talk about how to grow your own pak choy, also known as bok choy, in your home garden, 100% organic, super simple, easy, affordable, and with the least amount of space possible. This was growing in a brick hole right here. So, you know, no matter what you have, you can grow pak choy. Let's get going. Hello everyone, thank you all so much for joining in. This is the Trini Gardener channel and I'm so excited that you made it for this video because we're going to be talking about growing the number one beginner crop in my opinion. If there's anything I think a beginning gardener should try to grow first, it is pak choy. It is so easy to grow. Anyone can grow pak choy and it is nutritious. It will fill you. It will make sure you're no longer hungry. It will get the job done and I actually think that pak choy is truly underestimated in Trinidad. I think that the price of pak choy being so cheap, people underestimate how amazing this crop is. But it truly is something that if you want to be more self-sustainable and you don't want to necessarily, as a beginning gardener, go out and try growing the most difficult crops, it definitely is the crop for you. So let's get straight into growing pak choy. Now you can grow pak choy in literally anything that you want. You can grow pak choy in containers, you can grow it in the ground, you can grow it in a raised bed, you can grow it in a hanging PVC planter. I'll put up my guide for my DIY PVC hanging planter. And you can have your pak choy there. I have these pak choy growing in the holes of bricks that are holding together my raised bed here. And they are growing fine. It's probably less than a quarter gallon of soil that they have inside there. And they are doing just amazingly. I mean, you tell me what you think about these pak choy. And these pak choy, they're so resilient. That's something that we don't talk about much with pak choy. They're so resilient and they do bounce back because these pak choy, when they were transplanted, within the first week, some slugs came in and just devastated these three pak choy that you're seeing here. And the pak choy bounced back. This is the exact same pak choy. I just never pulled them out. I left them after they got eaten back by these slugs inside of the holes of these bricks here. I kept on watering. I mean, when I watered this raised bed, I just kept on watering the holes, right? Indirectly watering. And, you know, I looked back at these maybe like a month after and I was like, where did you all come from? Like, I don't remember you all being here, but they were here. They got eaten back and they bounced back. They're so resilient and the leaves here are just so nice and healthy. I'm just like always impressed by pak choy. I'm always impressed by it. And I really do think it's an underestimated crop because it's just so healthy, so nutritious. It's so filling as well. I mean, pak choy, tomatoes, roti, rice, whatever. I mean, it's just, if you're looking for being self-sustainable, you really can't go wrong with pak choy. Now, when it comes to sunlight, I mean, pak choy is a southeast asian crop that's where it's originally from it's designed for that kind of weather which is luckily what we have in trinidad so you want to give it as much sunlight as you possibly can all right so that's shooting for that eight to ten hours of sunlight if you can't it can work with some shade a lot of these um, leafy vegetables they do handle shade fairly okay so if you can give it you know between like a in you know, like around six seven hours it's not the end of the world any less than that, what can happen is that you may not see the actual danger in it. But sometimes when slugs and caterpillars come and start to eat your pak choy, it's not necessarily that the slugs and caterpillars are just being bad and they're just attacking your pak choy. It could sometimes be because your pak choy is not getting enough sunlight. So therefore the pak choy doesn't have as much energy as it feels like it needs to survive. And what a plant will do is when it doesn't have that amount of sunlight, it doesn't feel like it's getting the amount of energy to photosynthesize, that plant will actually send out stress signals like hormones. And what insects will do is they will pick up on those hormones and they will say, okay, well, this factory here is stressed. That's the one we're going to attack. So if you notice sometimes, you can have two lettuce, two celery, two whatever side by side. And the pest will come in and they'll attack just one. And very often in my garden, I see that happen. And that's simply because Sometimes a plant is just stressed and stressing can be for different reasons. In this case, we're talking about sunlight. It could also happen with uh, water. So we'll talk about watering now, which is that your pak choy, because it's such a nice, it's a leafy green crop, you need to have enough moisture in your soil. So well-even soil and of course having a mix of soil that is 
rich in organic matter to retain that moisture that is what is going to make sure that your soil is always nice and you know cool with enough moisture in it you don't want to flood your back tree and you want to of course avoid planting your back tree anywhere that there is going to be flood because back tree that sits in um you know stagnant water is going to get root rot and that can also cause some other fungal issues with the pack tray. So for the most part, you know, nice, loose, well-draining soil is the way to go with your pack tray and you will be fine with that. Now, in terms of fertilizer, I never fertilize pack tray. I don't think it's necessary apart from what I put in the initial growing mix, all right? So I'll take you all over to the potting up station and we'll talk about what I put into my growing mix to feed the pack tray all throughout the life the pack tree and this is what pack tree seeds look like you can start your pack tree seeds they normally germinate really quickly within three four days pack tree seeds will germinate and you're good to go let it grow for about two three weeks this is what your seedlings are going to look like i bought these seedlings like 50 cents for one really cheap right so in terms of the green mix that we're going to be using i use a mixture of comanio right and wood compost you see how it closes together here stays firm but then it can fall apart so that means it's going to have good drainage and also good water retention full of organic matter that's what you want your soil to look like something that's full of organic matter that's rich in nutrients for pack tray because i'm not going to be doing any further fertilization this itself is going to feed the pack tray all throughout the life of the pack tray right so i'm just putting it into a brick wall because to be honest i don't worry too much about where i grow pack tray wherever it is space pack tray will just grow it's just really good for growing like that okay so you want to just rough up a little bit the root ball right um sometimes it's kind of hard to rough it up but if it's possible you know just kind of get the roots a little bit moving out of that root ball and ready to like go into the soil itself and then grow properly okay i put normally a fairly deep hole deep enough to cover the root system and a little bit of the stem because if not it tends to lean over so the soil itself is going to prop it up and keep it upright Next super important step, the last step is to make sure and water in your seedling. This is going to avoid transplant shock. That's where a plant doesn't feel comfortable because it's a baby. You transplant it, you don't water it, and then it doesn't do very well at all. So make sure water your seedlings as soon as you transplant. It's going to give it the best chance of survival. All right? Make sure it's nice and moist. The water goes all the way through. All right? And then I don't worry too much if it's a little bit covered. It's going to be fine. Factor is fairly resilient, so you don't need to worry too much about it, even if a bit of dirt gets on the leaf. It's going to be completely okay and there you go all planted in and as we're here i thought i'd show you all this cool thing this is what a pack tray looks like when it has bolted and gone to seed produces a stem you have the flowers the little green parts around the flowers contain the seeds right remember a plant will bolt as i mentioned in my brassicas video when it feels stressed in this case the stress came from not picking the pack tray in time once your leaves go from soft to hot pick it quickly and there you go within just two months you should have some nice pack tray ready to be cut and picked one tip when you're harvesting pak choy is that especially in a home garden you should use that to your advantage meaning that you do not need to pick the entire head of pak choy when you're ready to harvest you could just pick out the amount of leaves that you want now of course if you have a big family then this information doesn't really matter to you you're going to need the entire head anyway something that i would do very often is that i'll leave the pak choy here and i will you know maybe one day i'm making like a soup or like a broth and the soup is just ready you know almost to be taken off and i'll just come down pick like two leaves of this two three leaves and just take it up wash it put it into the um, pot and you know just just use that because that's all i need for that time now of course if you're eating you know an entire meal of pak choy then you need to you know pick the entire pak choy especially if you you know you have a big family but it's just something to consider as a home gardener that the way that the market and the supermarket is designed is designed for you to buy more all right, which is you know that's that's the name of the game that's the that's the market right but as a home gardener you don't have to follow those rules so if you don't need the entire plant leave the plant in pick what you need and do a bit of a cut and come again because especially some of these smaller leaves they will grow back right so you don't have to pick the entire thing you just pull out what you need cook that eat it leave the rest and it more than likely will grow back it doesn't always grow back for the entire time it's not like it's going to last forever but it's definitely something to consider so that you can make the most out of your garden and that you're not forcing yourself to then have to end up in a problem with you know storing so much of and then it starts to melt in the fridge and that kind of thing there's a bit of a tip to help you when you're harvesting and you're enjoying the nice fruit of your labor with your pack tray. and that is honestly all that you need to know when it comes to growing pack tray. 
I really hope that you enjoyed this video, but more importantly, of course, I hope that you learned something from this video. And I hope it's going to encourage you, especially some of you um, new gardeners who've been telling me that, you know, you've been wanting to start your garden, you've been a bit nervous about it. I hope this is going to push you to do it. Grow pack tray. If there's anything that a beginning gardener should grow, not just a beginning gardener. Everyone should be growing it, but especially a beginning gardener, it's gardening on easy level. You really don't have to worry too much about your pack tray. You can get your seedlings very cheap. You grow in mix very, very cheap as we've talked about and you can have your nice ready to have this pack tray within just two months that's just eight weeks nothing complicated at all about that all right so remember if you know someone who would be interested in growing some nice organic healthy nutritious food for themselves and their family then feel free to share this video with them i remember you can follow us on instagram tiktok and on facebook to see more stuff coming out of the training gardeners garden i remember to share your pictures and videos coming out of your garden we're so excited and it motivates us so much to see you all gardening 100% organic in your gardens. And remember, as always, this has been the Love Honey Trini Gardener channel reminding you to get up and get green. Take care.